Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick little talk about something that's been on my mind in regards to the gaming space. Um, I was watching an Asmongold video, well, a video of him reacting to another video, um, and the video was basically centered around this idea of casual players in World of Warcraft being uh, kind of left behind, or I don't know if necessarily left behind, but just not being catered to, maybe, or respected. Um, by uh, Blizzard in World of Warcraft, and it was an interesting video, and uh, I think I've got through about half of it at the moment, but I really wanted to um, just share my opinions on one of the topics that they brought up, which was to do with respecting players' time, I think it was what they were, the way they phrased it. So, I've kind of had this thought for a while now, and a lot of people tend to think this way about gaming, is that, you know, there's a game developer out there, they have, you know, they have a a job to create a game for their player base or for the consumer and what people seem to think um, the part of their role is is to take the gamers time into a consideration and respect their time by making content that is um, well, the, the implication based off of the video at least what I took away from it was that they should create the video with the sorry, they should create the game with the intention that their time is valuable, and so therefore they should, you know, the things should be time conscious. And the implication being, you know, it doesn't take horrendous amounts of time to get from point A to point B, for example. Um, and it wasn't always, you know, it's not always in regards to traveling around a game. But I think the examples they gave were how to get into raiding in World of Warcraft was an example. That there's these uh, you know, ten, 10 steps that they have to follow in order to, you know, even start raiding in the game. 17 different add-ons that are connected to five different uh, third-party sites that then feed you information into an algorithm that then uh, parses out that information and does mathematical calculations into where it tells you how to actually mathematically maximize your artifact power gains on your third moon can all because your guild's trying to kill Sire Denathria's mythic and you can't can't raid on your main character because it doesn't do enough DPS, so you're trying to power level your fucking alt, and you're trying to get a conduit, and you're trying to get a conduit energy, you're out of conduit energy, you gotta wait for tomorrow, and then you're trying to get all to your legendary, you gotta go back into Torghast, and then you have to get to layer 8, but you don't have layer 8, so you have to buy a WoW token, so you can buy a carry to get to layer 8, and then finally you get to layer 8, and you have to buy another WoW token to buy the white item on the auction house, and then fucking enchant the white item on the auction house with the WoW token gear, and then you get the fucking enchant for the legendary, and then oh my god, the legendary was the same piece that you got from the raid, so now you need to get a legend of the legendary, so you buy another wild token for 200,000 gold for $20 again, and then you make a second legendary. Like, this is... That's the experience. Now, I played WoW for quite some time. Probably... I think I played WoW for around three, four... Mm, I think about four years, and I would have considered myself a fairly... Uh, not a casual gamer at all in World of Warcraft. You know, I was doing all the content, PvPing. PvP was actually one of the bigger things I used to used to like doing. Um, but I did actually get into raiding at one point, and you know, would do all of the mythic raids and all that good stuff. Um, but the thing, so so the the idea of the developer has to respect your time, I think, is a little bit. I don't. Know, it seems to me like the you're looking at the problem from the wrong angle. What that kind of seems to suggest is that everything in the game should be quick and easy to accomplish. So if, if a new player comes into WoW and they want to start getting into that, what people would consider the in-game content, you know, all they have to do is, you know, uh, they've, they've got two hours a day to play. They should be able to, within, let's just be generous and say within the first uh, three days, they should be able to get into raiding in the game. Now, that kind of doesn't make sense to me. Um, and... What I think the actual issue is here, that people are starting to highlight, and they're kind of, in my opinion, they're misunderstanding what the actual problem is. The problem with people feeling like their time isn't being respected in a video game is because the incentive in the game are not given to the player to want to have to spend that time doing it. So I, I personally don't mind, so, so uh, New World was a good example of this, right? So a lot of people complained in New World that they didn't want to have to run from 
halfway across the map to get to their new location and they didn't want to have to spend all this time they weren't they weren't interested in doing that and i, I even had friends and uh, my brother actually was one of these people who he got into the game and he, he kind of got into it off the back of my su uh, suggestion to get into the game so he wasn't fully interested in you know, I mean, he, he was interested in the game because he saw the combat and he thought it was really cool, but he wasn't really invested in playing the game as a whole uh, from like an, an MMO perspective or like a an RPG perspective, if that makes sense. So his kind of mindset in the game was very different to mine. Um, so he got into the game and, you know, his immediate complaint was, oh my gosh, I have to run so far. When I got into New World, and I was really uh, looking forward to New World, you know, I'd followed some of the uh, beta stuff, and so I was quite interested in it. My immediate reaction to having to travel around was that I was enjoying my time getting there. You know, I was I would you know stop and gather resources. I would uh, enjoy doing the quests along the way. Um, you know, PvPing was a big part of it, you know, I'd be looking for combat along the way, if there's people to fight, if there's anyone flagged up, and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, so our two perspectives were very different. So that was an immediate complaint that they had. Now, the same thing happened with another friend of mine who said, you know, oh, you know, I just can't really get into the game, there's too much running around, and things like that. And what I would say to that is that the player base that... New World is trying to target is a different player base to the one that is making these complaints. And my suggestion to them would be, well, maybe it's not the right game for you. Um, and that's what I said, you know, I said, well, maybe it's probably not the right game for you. You know, you enjoy this one element of the game, but the the game as a whole doesn't just involve that one element, and nor should it, because the the only way that the game functions is, is if you have a lot of people who are enjoying the content as a whole. If the game was dead and didn't have that community of people who enjoyed the game for what it was, then the game just wouldn't wouldn't exist, and it wouldn't you know have a player base at all. And now, New World's kind of a bad example because it failed for a plethora of other reasons, but. Yeah, so the, the the point still stands. The 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 problem with developers quote unquote respecting the the uh, customer's time is more to do with the fact that certain people are trying to get into these games that aren't really the game is not designed for them, right? And that might be the crux of the argument. If and a lot of people I think might be suggesting, well, maybe they should create the game for these people, and they should target that audience. And that that's valid, and I definitely could see where that would be the case. You know, maybe they, they maybe they would benefit from doing that. They would make a lot more money because they'd be reaching a new audience um, of people. But oftentimes, what happens, at least from my experience in playing MMOs for a very long time, is that as soon as a, an MMO starts to cater to that and starts to veer off of the path that they initially built their player base on, it really starts to destroy the um, the foundation of the game and it starts to decay it happens in every game that i've i've played you know you get these producers coming in we need to start targeting this audience we need to start doing this and that you know they start demanding that the, the game targets a certain audience and then the, the fabric of the game what made the game fun for the for its core player base its grassroots player base just starts to decay and, it, and the game just dies um there was a good example oh, what was it had a good example in my mind about this. Um, oh shoot, it'll come back to me. Okay, so I remembered what it was now. So um, one thing that I noticed from playing Elden Ring, so uh, Elden Ring came out recently and I've been playing it a lot and I've been also following a lot of the, the discussion in the community. One of the, the things that has come up during uh, the massive success of Elden Ring, I think they sold like 12 million copies or something um, already, probably even more than that now, I haven't checked. And one of the, the discussion points that came out of it is that a lot of people were complaining the game's too hard, the game is not user-friendly, it's not accessible enough, um, I don't understand it, you know, and uh, one of the complaints was that okay, well, you guys have been in the community for playing Dark Souls, you know, for however long you've played Dark Souls for. I'm a new player. This doesn't work for me. This game is not... It's too hard. It's I don't understand it. You've got all of this prior knowledge from the other games, and so therefore you are part of that niche audience that that's FromSoft has targeted with the Souls franchise. And it's a really good point, because 
and I actually agree with these people that that's true. That's exactly what's happened. Um, the, the thing is, I don't think that that's a problem. So one one thing that's really obvious about this is that the game should not be focused on everyone. It's, it's, the game should not be... Um, it's a niche, right? So it kind of it starts to erode what the game was initially made to be. And I think, personally, I think that that would actually not serve the game company well. What would actually serve the, co the company well would be to... Um, stick to their core player base, stick to who they know are uh, the loyal uh, followers, but if they can, in the process, expose that type of game to more people, then they're going to get more people playing it, and maybe more people will see, oh, I actually really enjoy this kind of game. Instead of taking the experience of the people who aren't really fans of that game, and then trying to tailor that game around those people. Now, for games like World of Warcraft, which was the discussion point that uh, the point of discussion in the video, the game just isn't that fun anymore. Like, and take away the fact that they changed it a lot and people didn't like a lot of the changes. The game just isn't, you know, we can we've got it in front of I think as many people as we can. Uh, obviously, it could st still a lot of people that don't know what the game's about. And they may still enjoy it, but I think what's happened is that they've reached the point where people have been so exposed to the game and the game is still not doing well that they're kind of desperate to find these new ways to captivate new audiences and so that meant that they well now we're going to change the formula of the game we don't we're not going to stick by what the what made the game successful in the first place and there's lots of things that play into that like culture shifting and uh, people you know value different things the older they get uh, things like that that also play into it so yeah, I just thought that that was a, a good example of a gaming company that has stuck to its niche, the, the FromSoft Souls niche, and it's serving them well. And a lot of people are finding that they enjoy the game now, now that it's been exposed to them, but I really, really hope that they don't start changing the way that they make the game, just because a lot of people have been exposed to it that didn't like it. I think that would ruin the franchise, it would ruin the, the game and what that game is supposed to be. And that game respects your time if it's a game that you enjoy. Even though it's a really hard game, you die over and over and over again. Some people don't enjoy that, and that's fine. And some people do. And the people who don't enjoy it are going to feel like the game doesn't respect their time. Like you have to keep having to die and run back. And Man, the game just doesn't respect my time. But in reality, there's another person playing the game that's like... This game is awesome, I had so much fun, every minute of it was just a blast. Um, even when I was running back, you know, it made the victory so much sweeter. Stuff like that. So, anyway, it's just a bit of a, a shift in, in perspective, I think. Yeah, that's, I just wanted to vent a little bit, and I'm trying to get into the habit of kind of, if I have something I want to talk about, or if I think of something, I want to kind of express that vocally. Uh, I think it's good to practice uh, vocalizing it's these thoughts and stuff that you are interested in. That's something I don't do enough, and so I'm trying to get into the habit of doing it more. I think it'll benefit me for my work, it'll benefit me for my social life, and so yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Here's my two cents. MMOs don't need to be catered to everyone, and yeah, peace.